Well, what's up, guys, and welcome to a very speedometry and instrument clustery version of Project Time Garage. Perched proudly behind me here is a 1994 Dodge Ram 2500 V10 four wheel drive, five speed, long wheelbase, standard cab truck. It's blue. If you've not seen this truck before, you can look right up here in the corner of the screen and I'm going to put a link and that link is going to be to the whole series that we've done on this truck so far as we kind of bring it back from sitting for far too long. I've owned the truck since 1997 and it's been a lot of time at a, at a, at a family member's house. So go catch up on the series. It'll bring you back to where we are today. Today's issue is the speedometer. If you recall, in the very first video that I had where we went and rescued this thing and drove it home all that distance, that first thing I realized was the speedometer was like way wrong, like way wrong. Not tires wrong size wrong, like 35 miles an hour off at uh, 55. Well, it turns out the truck drives pretty good up around 90 or so. Nope, not 90. I don't know when the speedometer decided to get that far off, but it is way off. 90 there, 55 there. I guess we have something to fix on it after all. <laughs> so at 55 miles an hour, the truck registers about 90 or the speedometer registers about 90. 20 miles an hour, it only registers about 40 or 45 or something like that. So it's it's different the percentage that it's off is different so i'm not sure what the issue is but i need to get to the bottom of it because that's kind of a pain i thought it might be fun to hear what you guys think is wrong with it before we ever get started and learn what's wrong with it that's always kind of cool to guess and see who's right right let's do this let me give you all the information i know about it real quick as far as what it's doing and then you guys can pause the video and tell me what's what you think's up down in the comments it reads 35 miles Per hour or so fast at 55 it only reads about 20 or 25 miles an hour uh, fast at lower speeds um, obviously it's, it's it's exactly right at zero so as it sits here now guarantee the speedometer is perfectly right here's a key piece of information in my troubleshooting I found out that the cruise control on the truck will actually not set uh, below like say 50 or something like that 55 or something like that According to the gauge. So if I'm running along at say 45 and I try to set the cruise it won't set That's a clue and in my opinion. That's a clue In fact as I as I continue to speed up and speed up and speed up and try to get the speedometer to set It doesn't set until somewhere around 60 or so something like that. So GPS speed sets about 35 or 36 miles an hour speedometer speed doesn't set to about 60 so that should kind of give you guys some some ideas so anyway pause the video tell me what you think down there i'm see who gets this right so at this point let's get on with our troubleshooting methodologies and let me show you what i've got up my sleeve besides more arm all that information that i have there sort of tells me that i'm dealing with an issue with the cluster in fact, I'm so sure that I'm dealing with an issue with the cluster that I was uh, scrounging around the salvage yards and I found that. Boys and girls, feast your eyes on that. That is an authentic simulated wood grain thing inside of there. Now, if that doesn't get you going, I don't know what will. The idea is we're going to pop this thing in, we're going to drive down the road and hope that the speed hummer actually works on it and see if we get a different result if we do we know that we were right we know which way to point our, our, our know which way to point our troubleshooting skills right um so let's uh let's stick this in there go for a quick ride see what happens oh well, with this cluster installed very barely installed in fact, the dash is laying right there here we go running about 30 33, 35, something like that. Phone says that it agrees with that. Of course, I'm in a three-quarter ton long bed truck, so you can't hold the thing 
any steel at all. But anyway, 35 there, about 35 there. Speed up just a little bit. About 40 there, about 40 there. About 50 there, about 50 there. You can read it, about 50 there. Well, the sun's washing out pretty bad. That's about 50. So, that tells me enough to know that the issue with this appears to be the, uh, the cluster itself or the speedometer itself. So, I guess with that information in mind, I guess I need to work on um, work on fixing it. Maybe we'll pull the speedometer out and put it on a bench and see what we can come up with. I would just keep the wood grain one in the truck, but the mileage is wrong. Plus, you know that um, that wood grain look. I'm afraid people would be more tempted to steal the truck with that kind of hotness in there. So I think we should probably go back with our plain Jane unit. All right, cluster out. Let's go up to my little lab room and get a uh, soldering iron out and maybe a hot air station. And we got to extract this speedometer from the cluster and we're going to go through and see if we see anything wrong. So I'll see you up there. Okay, welcome to my little, I'm going to call it a laboratory room. This is where I film uh, content for my second channel, Project Time Tech. Go up there to see that channel. More techie geeky stuff. So I have the cluster on the bench and we're going to basically go ahead and take it apart real quick. I'll put you on the overhead camera. I want to take it apart and I want to take the speedometer and I'm going to put it under this little cheapy cheapy desktop uh, microscope thingy here and we're going to basically look for bad solder joints because I'm I'm reasonably sure that's what it is because anytime I find a piece of old electronic equipment that works flaky, it's either bad slash leaky capacitor um, or a broken solder joint. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll turn you on the overhead and we'll have a look. Okay, well, let's start with um, getting the glass off of it because I know that's got to happen. There's actually two screws here that are missing from that time I replaced with a white face gauge kit. I guess I didn't put them back in. All right. What about this? What holds this in? Nothing. Oh, I got something holding it in. Oh, it looks like the bulbs and this, um, this tape hold it in guess that just pulls off yep all right okay uh, speedometer how's that held in I bet it's like the Pathfinder and it's got these four screws. Listen, if you're concerned about all the dandruff on your shirt, the easy way to fix that, screw a ball cap on your head, turn the lights off, sit down, subscribe to my channel, watch all the videos. Take your mind right off that whole dandruff thing. Guess I should probably hold this one so it doesn't come out violently. Because I think every man alive has to do that every time they have their fingers on a speedometer. All right. Ooh, pretty. All right, let me set that out of the way. Speedometer. Yeah, see, there's some circuitry. So let's put this on the overhead and see what see what we find. I need to get this out of here somehow. I guess that's how that works. 
kind of wouldn't mind taking the rest of it off, but we'll see what happens here. Yeah, just like that right there. All right. And let's turn the light down a little bit, which is going to screw up our focus, I'm sure. But either way, we can start looking for issues and such. Actually, I'm going to spin this thing around. I bet this looks great on a big screen. Actually, that one right there, I see a ring around it. So right here, I see a little ring right around the outside of that. That could potentially be a broken solder joint. I see the same thing around this one. There's four of these. What does the other one look? Yeah, I see it there too. And let's go over to the other one. I see it there too. Interestingly though, If I look at, at some of these, like these resistors here, if I look at some of these resistors like here and here, I don't, I don't really see those signs there as much. I don't see it on any of these. Interesting. Okay. Well, i tell you what I'm going to do. I am going to I think I'm just going to retouch a lot of these. Let me see if I can focus this a little bit better even than when I had it. There we go. Let's see about that right there. Yeah, I think we I think we should just reflow most of these because Actually, this one right here looks to be maybe a little bit suspect in this little area right through here. See that round right there? Yeah, let's reflow. Let's just do that and better safe than sorry. Yeah. But yeah, I'm just basically going to start. I'm going to put a little bit of flux um, on these connections before I reflow them. And just going to retouch them. Shouldn't take much. Actually, I see a couple of places right here that that are problematic, it looks like. And basically what I'm doing is I'm just going to put my flux on here as, if nothing else, just placeholders so I'll know what I've hit and what I haven't on each side of the board. This stuff's kind of hard to squeeze out of here. I'm sure most of these things that I'm doing here are probably all fine, but may as well just hit them all. I mean, the soldering iron's here. It only takes a second, right? Okay, all cleaned up. With that done, I'll just get a little bit of isopropyl alcohol. Clean the thing up a bit.
Well, running along at 45, we are doing about 45. That is a 100% better result than we had before, so I'm gonna call that part fixed. What I'm not gonna call fixed is the gas gauge because the other day I got in the truck and realized that the gas gauge was reading empty when it had just been reading full a while before that. So I think what we got going on here is a bad case of fuel sending issue or tank ground issue or something because I just put a um, fuel pump in the thing and it worked just fine. And actually, I don't believe it's a gauge problem because the other dash did exactly the same thing. Um, you know, the test dash, it read really low too. So I think, I think I have a classic issue of something wrong in the tank or wiring or grounding. So I'll have to troubleshoot that. But at least for this, for this point, what I needed to get done is done. I've got good speed. It's right. It's not going crazy. So solder job did the trick. One more thing to cross off the list. I don't know what we're going to be working on next, but rest assured it's going to be something. And uh, as usual, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, tell all your friends about us. Guys, I'll see you next time.